It's certainly the case that net trade um, and export growth has been a major driver of UK growth over the last year, in the, in the period since sterling's depreciation. And in our forecast, we're expecting that exports will continue to grow strongly for this year. There's something of a puzzle here, right? The surveys of exporters generally look pretty positive. And we saw that, for example, in yesterday's PMI. The official trade data from the ONS have shown export volumes being quite weak in the early part of this year. Now, so far, I'm inclined to put more weight on the surveys and expect the trade data to catch up. But that's the thing where we've got to sort of wait and see the evidence come through. More broadly, the UK is very sensitive to swings in global growth. Mm -hmm. I think if global growth were to slow significantly, obviously all else equal, that would be a negative for UK growth. So far what we see in the surveys of exports is generally still pretty positive. How do you think a so-called global trade war would play into that? I mean, of course, this is the other big theme that we discuss uh, on the show and in financial markets, and that is a potential retaliatory tit-for-tat trade war going on between the US and the rest of the world. And of course, UK will be caught in the crosswinds because it is an open economy. Does that concern you as well, the threat of more tra tariffs on a global trading level? In broad terms, freer trade has been a big driver of global prosperity, global growth over the last 25 years or so. And the UK has gained enormously in terms of economic growth from that. The UK is a very globalised economy, large exporter, and also large foreign direct investment in the UK. And so swings in global growth have a big effect on, on the UK. If you were to get a retreat from freer global trade, that also could affect the UK growth outlook. But again, so far in the surveys of export orders, it looks as if what we've seen externally is not significantly, not having a major effect on UK export growth. But clearly it's a thing with which we are keeping a close eye on. How closely did the Bank of England watch what the Fed are doing? Because the Fed are more than halfway through a hiking cycle. The economy is still looking pretty robust. And uh, in fact, all of the hikes have been very readily absorbed uh, by the financial markets there and uh, also by, uh, by consumers. So does that uh, give you confidence, perhaps, that the Bank of England, once they start a full uh, hiking trajectory, could get to a similar outcome without creating too many side effects? Well, I, I, I would say that the Fed make their decisions based on their economic conditions and we make our decisions based on ours. So there's certainly no sense in which we are obliged to or feel under pressure to follow the, the Fed. I do think, it's, I mean, I, I think the Fed's experience in terms of the unwind of asset purchases has been quite interesting with a very gradual and predictable pace of unwind and so far the market implications of that seem to have been quite limited. I do, do think that that's quite an interesting thing to have seen. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.